All right. Hello, my name is Shyla Court with Decorizing Your Light. Life, decorizing your life, and I have a storefront in Watonga, Oklahoma. I am going to show you um, the. This is something you've probably seen a thousand times, but just some inspiration or something you can do. It's the barnwood stamp. Love this thing, but this is what I want to show you. I had my daughter rescued from my new son-in-law who didn't understand stuff. A two-tiered table. I've already made a YouTube and repurposed part of the other smaller circle. Look how huge this is, okay? So I bought a huge one of these off of Amazon. This is a Lazy Susan mechanism. And you can get them, like the one I put on this beast can go up to 200 pounds, all right? So you screw, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to do it because you can YouTube it, but you screw this down into your part and you don't have to do what I'm fixing to show you my husband did under here. But this was so big, we didn't want it to go like this. So he did something weird. I, I didn't really understand it. I acted like I did. But normally, when I use these, I just like literally turn it, you screw it in, you're good. Okay? But because of the size of this. So this was a, a baby one. These aren't very much on Amazon. Oh, this is heavy. Okay. So he cut this base, and in between here and there is one of those mechanisms. They're not very much. I think this one might have been $12. Those baby ones, I got a whole bunch for like maybe $12. So this is a repurposed tabletop. I did go ahead and paint this because if you're sitting on a sofa, you can kind of see that, you know, if you're counter level. So think about that when you do it. You can do this on a much smaller scale. What I've done is taken some clay paint. Let me point it down because we're fixing to get started. So I did three colors. I put a layer of pure white clay paint with some um, salt wash in it to make it kind of texture and thick, which you can leave your clay paint out and add plaster of Paris, add sheetrock mud. You can do things to make your paint texture. So that base coat is that, pure white. Then I added a kind of a, not a real good coverage of a tan. And then I went back over and just used a um, creamy. So that's my base. And I did do it, the um, thick one, all in one way because, you know, the grains of the wood go one way. So I did build texture that you won't be able to see on here like that all one way. All right. And then I did take my sander where you can wet distress and did this right here. Okay. It doesn't look as good on here as it does in person. I feel like it looks really good, but this is going to be on a beast of a table. I mean, people could use it for something else, but that's what I, I seen. Don't, don't load your stamp on your item because you will mess up and get it on here. Okay. So always have a piece of paper, a trash bag, grocery bag, something under it when you stamp, which I did not prepare for that. So actually here, I can use this one right here. You can use clay paint and load it with a brayer. And clay paint is beautiful because it, or chalk, whatever, it dries super fast and you can move on. The ink takes about 24 hours unless it's on a super porous surface like fabric or this is going to be porous because I did not seal this clay paint. You can do it either way, seal or not seal. I chose not to seal. So you can load it with that, but we're going to do the ink. And I wanted it to show up real good, so I'm using black. Um, but I thought the, the gray that we have would be really good on this, but I really want it to show up and you can, you know, after it dries, you can distress it back. Okay. And with this stamp, you can, um, make, use this one, put it here here and here to make one long board. But because the surface isn't very big, I want small choppy ones to have more of the look. So that's something to think about. Okay, so let's just get started. Now, if you were gonna do this perfect, which this is not perfect, because it's supposed to look distressed, you know, you might think about, do I wanna start in the center and build out? You know, when you wallpaper room, they start in a corner that you don't, you know, there's things to think about to map this out. We're going. We're just going here. Um, I think I'll start it back here. Here, let me get this up a little bit so you can see. We're going to start right back here. And I've got my lines. And this is a lazy Susan, so I've got to kind of be careful here, right? Um, I could have wedged something in there to stop it, but we're just going to go. So you hoover over where you're going. 
and then drop it. Because it's on clay paint, it's not gonna slip and slide as much. Okay, now hold it in place with one hand and pet it with the other. Diode sister say tickle it, do all sorts of things. I'm not real good in the picture, but I'm fixing to come that way. So get that image on there. And it doesn't matter since this is so distressed if I've, you know, didn't rubber over part of it and I get there. Okay. Okay, it's real faint, but it looks good. Okay, now I'm just going to start my next one and I'm going to build up and out. So let's reload. This is going to take a lot of a lot of ink. A lot of times these don't take a lot of ink. Um, but these are really it's a large stamp. So flip it over and I'm going to do because I want the seam. So I'm going to start it here. And you kind of got to think about lining it up, you know, like, do you want to cover a little bit of that or leave a gap? And so you just got to kind of figure out what you want to do there. So hoover over, drop it, hold it in with one. How, what is the craziest thing? If you guys that have done this barnwood, because it's been around, it's barnwood planks has been around a long time. What are some of the things you've used the stamp for? Because I've seen it on a backdrop on a piece of fabric and I was like, are you kidding me? I would have never thought to do to do that on fabric. So I thought that was cool. So if you got any inspiration or ideas or tips and tricks about using this, please let me know. OK, I am sweating out here. I've got to get my window unit in my studio. OK, so then you kind of lift it straight off so you don't smear it. So if this was sealed with a water based top coat or wax or whatever, there would be a little bit more of this but it, it's holding steady pretty good since it's not. Oh my gosh, guys, I love this so much. This one's my favorite one, I don't know why. It just looks like the more so for real one. Okay, so let's go ahead and load that one because I wanna make, go ahead and make, no, I'm doing short choppy ones, I forgot. So let's use the third one I haven't used. There's three big planks with this. And once I get this built a little bit, I wanna show you these knot holes. This one was missing forever and I knew it was somewhere. And I was rearranging thing in my, it used to be my store, now it's my storefront or studio. I finally found it. I was so sad because they really add some dimension. And you can, um, another way to add dimension is have a couple of different inks going. Have a couple of different paints going. Yes, get you some Lazy Susan mechanisms off of Amazon and find cut with a jigsaw or find some you can find round pieces all over the place okay so let's go flip it and i kind of think i want to do this one up here if you want to make sure you're keeping your lines level and not you know going cockeyed you can map it out with some painter's tape you can even draw a faint pencil line if you really want to be, you know, for sure. So there's some guidelines that can keep you on track that you can do. So hold it with one hand, rub it with the other, switch. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm going to get you guys up closer in a minute, too, and show you. Okay, so now we've got one of each stamp. So let me do this one. Since I did that one up here. And sometimes, like when you're doing a big project, you can like make posty notes and kind of like say list them, like stamp one, two, and three. And it it's seriously, you kind of have to keep track. Sometimes it's hard when you're right on top of something. So, you know, there's tips and tricks you can do. If you do use a brayer, and one of these and do paint instead of this you do not want your paint too heavy dripping down into the part of the image that's not supposed to have paint in there so you got to kind of think about that all right so let's and if you're working on fabric you do not have any grace on um this <laughs> you know with this if it was sealed I could kind of wipe some of it back 
oops, I can already see I kind of went down on that. And this would be so pretty with some of the um, wallflower. I may do that too. I wasn't planning on it, but now that I'm getting into it, I may put some of the wallflower transfers or something over this. It looks so good with the barnwood plank. All of the IOD things layer so good. Okay, so now let's do let's do another one of these, and then I'm going to start doing some knot holes and stuff because those really add to this, making it look authentic. Okay, so let's lift that straight off. Now, it is a rubber thing, so you don't want to just smash, smash, smash hard because you'll mar the image. You just kind of, just to where it'll meet together. You don't have to go crazy with it. I say that because when I first started using them, that's what I did. Okay, so, oh, look at this, guys. It looks so for real. Okay, let me get it down over here a little bit. Look at that. I love this. Okay, so now let's, I want to show you what the, um, not holes and stuff. Let's do a little bit of that. Which side did I have that on? I want to get it on my, okay, here we go. Okay, so let's do knot hole. And it's just fun. It's just like, where do I want to put it? I want to put it somewhere where you guys can see it. So let me just stick one right down here. I like these too. If you have a really bad spot, you did a paint job or there's a big chunk of veneer off or there's just an imperfect thing on whatever project you're working on, you can kind of put a transfer flyer over it, put this over it, and it just, it, it blends it and it actually makes it super interesting. Look at that. That is so cool. Okay, so let's try the other knot hole just so you can see the difference in them. Okay, let's put that one right up here. Let's take a little, little bit. Okay, look at that. It's just so good. Okay, so then, so you got the three big planks that I showed you, and then we have some like sawmill, um, saw blade cuttings or something. Here's some seams. So we're going to do one of those where you can put them together. So let's do this. This is like my favorite one, this little seam. I don't know. It's just weird how you get like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I love that. Hey, that one's so fun to do. So I'm probably like totally don't have to be loading this this much, but okay. And I cut most of my transfer or stamps out of, I leave them on their hard mount. And then it's just ready to go. When I wash them, which you can wash this with a Lysol wipe, um, I never take them off unless I have to. And it just works so good. Okay, so let's do in between here to make a seam. I did my store windows, um, display windows were just, you know, particle board we put up there. And I did it pretty much like this, the three colors of it, a white, a tan, you can use gray, cream, just some neutral colors to make it look the, you know, weathered wood. And then did this, it took a while, but it was so worth it. Look at that. Ah, I'm sorry, I get so excited about this because it's so, um, okay, so this is just a, um, if anybody knows what this is, I think it's a saw blade mark. So where do we want to put this? I'm just going to put it here because I kind of want it to show up. And anybody that knows how to cut wood or has worked at a sawmill, which a building I own that's rented for a cafe and I have my booth in there right now, they had a sawmill. And she would probably be like shaking her head at my placement and what I'm calling these things. I do know that's an all <laughs> because she's for real. I always think about the flower people, too, that really know how to garden and how I splice leaves and flowers together that are not right. Does anybody else ever think about that? It's like, that's not correct. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. It's just so cool. It just, mm, I can't help it. I love it. Here's one that looks like a little flag. So let me do that one because I want to have done one of everything and then I'm going to have to, oh wait, oh wait, oh look at that one. I don't know what that one is. That's another seam. Let's do that one real quick too. Okay, so let's do this seam. We're going to, right here, this needs a seam. 
So you just hold it in one spot, rub it with the other, and then switch. Oh, it's so good. I'm going to take this off and give you a close-up. Um, let's do this one other one. I just got to do it. So you can see one of all the pieces. Go ahead and cover this up. Another tip is when you store these and they have remade these more flat now, which I'm so excited about, I store mine upside down so the ink goes here, but they don't stack very good, but now the new ones will of the ink pads. Okay, so where do I put this one? <laughs> and you can always put like a piece of paper if you don't want the whole thing, you know, put a piece of paper over it so it doesn't. I want it to show up, so I probably should have done it on another one, but we'll just do it right here. And then I'll take this off and show you. Okay, look at that. Is that not going to be good with some flowers on it? It would even look good with these lemons, these lemons on it too. Can you believe that? And so I haven't even got the seam here, you know, and I'm just going to splice them. So this is all the pieces to the barnwood plank stamp. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'll go back and try to answer them.